I want to speak to us on what I have entitled this morning, How to Break Through Conflicts. How to Break Through Conflicts. Or how to break through stalemate that we find ourselves in. Now the world that we live in right now is full of conflicts. We have domestic conflicts. We have family conflicts between spouses, between siblings, between parents and their children. We have neighborhood conflicts. We also have conflicts between nations. All around us are conflicts. Some that we know, others we may never know. Some that we hear about, others we may never hear about, but our world is full of conflicts. That means that this world needs peacemakers. We need peacemakers in our homes. We need peacemakers in our families. We need peacemakers in our neighborhoods. When there is misunderstanding between siblings, we need one of them that can be able to be a peacemaker. When we have a, a conflict between spouses, one of those spouses must rise up and become a peacemaker. When there's conflict in the neighborhood, we need some people in that neighborhood that can stand up to be peacemakers. When there is conflict in the nation, I pray that the church, the body of Christ, will rise up to be the peacemakers. But right now, I am a very disappointed preacher. I'm disappointed with the church in this nation because the church has become part and parcel of the problem that we are having in this nation. The church in this nation has become part of the conflict brewers instead of peacemakers. But I'm praying that God will be gracious to us, that God will be merciful to us, that God will bring us back to track on track and place at where we ought to be, that we will be peacemakers in this nation. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, when we are a church and we are the ones that are calling, we are the ones that um, baptize our leaders with names. Do you know that some of the names that we are calling our leaders, that belittle them, that paint them black, stemmed from the church? That is how unfortunate this has been. But my prayer is that we will come back to our senses. We'll come back to the place where we will desire do not, you know, to see a peaceful nation. You see, it is different to pray for peace and behave otherwise. But my praise that as we pray for peace, we will also demonstrate it in our actions. We will also be there to make sure that the peace we are praying for, we are willing to work at it and we are willing to build it. Praise the name of the Lord. And so as a believer, part of the body of Christ, my prayer is that God will help you with the little that you can. Even if you are not known, that as far as, as you are concerned, you will play your part to make sure there is peace in your home. There is peace in your neighborhood. There is peace at your place of work. There is peace in your church congregation. And there is peace in the nation. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, there are three things uh, that you need to learn if you're going to be a peacemaker you need to write this down because God is counting on you number one you need to know and you need to understand how to de-escalate conflict hallelujah you need to know how to de-escalate conflict number two you need to know how to resolve conflict. Number three, you need to know how to reconcile after conflict. My prayer is that when you find yourself in a family feud, in a family conflict, you don't just stand there helpless. You don't just say, I, know, I don't know what to do. 
Neither do you become the person that fans up the conflict. But you will be a person that will seek for resolution. A resolve to resolve the conflict. Or you will do whatever you can to de-escalate it. To bring it down. To cool it down. Don't be the person that escalates the conflict. And of course, after we need to know how to move forward. How not to carry things in our hearts and in our minds. How not to carry grudges with us. We need to know how to move forward. So those three things are cru for, crucial for us. Not just because of the elections we have heard, but because we are relational beings. God has created us as relational beings. And as relational beings, we are going to step on each other's toes. We are going to say things that somebody does not like. We are going to rub each other the wrong way. And time and again, we will need to resolve. We will need to move together after we have resolved. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So if you don't know how to do this, then you will be, uh, be escalating conflicts that you find yourselves in instead of being a peacemaker. Remember the scripture we have heard? Peacemakers are going to sow seeds. Hallelujah. What kind of seed are you sowing? And the Bible also tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 9 that, you know, uh, peacemakers shall be called the sons of God. In other words, one of the ways for us to know that you are a son of God is if you are a peacemaker. If you don't make peace, then we can already decide and know that you are not a child of God. It doesn't matter how you sing, doesn't matter what you say, doesn't matter how many praise the Lord you utter. If you are not a peacemaker, you are not a child of God. Because one of the signs, one of the ways to identify you as a child of God is that you are a peacemaker. Hallelujah. Now, what peacemaking is not? What peacemaking is not? Before I give you um, certain points to help you be a peacemaker, you need to know what is not peacemaking. Peacemaking is not avoiding the conflict. It is not running away from the conflict or running away from the issues. Anytime you run away from a conflict, anytime you try to avoid the problem, you are not helping. You are not bringing peace. You are postponing the problem. And there are so many people that think they are bringing peace by avoiding, by running away from the conflict, but they are actually just postponing the problem. You are postponing the conflict. It will come again, and maybe it will come again in an ugly nature. So avoiding or running away from problem is not peacemaking. If you are in, in, your, in, a, in a relationship, husband and wife, parents and their children or siblings, and, and you see a conflict, and you're the type that always just wants to, you know, you don't want to know, you don't want to deal, do anything about it, you, you don't want to be involved, you don't want to talk about it, you don't want to deal with it, you are not creating peace. It could be like, you know what, let him just talk, let him just do whatever he wants to do. Me, I'm not going to do anything so that peace can be. You are postponing the problem or the conflict. Number two, um, what peace making is not it is not appeasing peacemaking is not appeasing somebody it's not pleasing you know there are times we want to just appease we want to please so we agree you know we have a conflict things are we are not agreeing on certain things and uh, you just decide, okay, let it be your way. Whatever you say, you know, you're saying, I don't want problems. I don't want issues. And so I appease you or I please you. And man, we have a problem with this. We always want the woman in the house to come down. We always want the woman to give in even when we are wrong. And this is not helping. You may think it's, it's bringing peace. And there are wives who are too quick, you know, too quick to just appease. Okay, you are the man. Okay, you have your way. And, and for a while you think you are peace, 
But what you're doing is you are bottling things up. You are, press, you are putting pressure inside. One day, that pressure will blow up. And it's not going to be good. Even for a nation, we can say, accept and move on. But what you're doing is we are trying to appease ourselves and thinking that this way we get peace quickly. But maybe we're bottling things up and we don't want a situation where... A day comes and we are blowing up as a nation. May God help us that that will be the case. Praise the name of the Lord. Now here are several things that you can do in order for you to be a peacemaker and be identified as, the, as a child of God. Number one, lower your voice. Learn to lower your voice in a conflict. Learn to lower your voice in a conflict. And by voice here, I don't mean, you know the sound i don't mean the loudness of your sound is part of it but also lower your voice even in the social media lower your voice there are people that are too loud in the social media you are too loud on twitter you are too loud on um instagram you are too loud we you are too loud you are making too much noise for us right now you need to lower your voice because if you lower your voice you will bring peace but when you are too loud you are actually fanning trouble you're fanning trouble so in a conflict the louder you get the louder the other person becomes that is why if you are on Twitter and you're too loud, the other side will also be too loud. And so we need to lower our voices as a people. The church taking the front lead, we must lower our voice. Praise the name of the Lord. If you are the type that, you know, no comment goes without you challenging it, without you commenting on it. You are studying, there are people you have marked. What has it to be said? And you fire. You, you can't let him just get away with it. It's like you've made up your mind. Whatever he says, I must respond. I must correct it. And there are people you have marked. May God help you to lower your voice. Praise the name of the Lord. Lower your voice. Lower your tone. Even when you're talking to people about this issue of the election and the results, please lower your voice. Those who are defending the victory, lower your voices so that we can have peace. Those who are not happy with the results, lower your voices. We need peace. We need to move on together. Praise the name of the Lord. Kenya is bigger than all of us. We don't have another nation, people. This is the nation we have. We must live here. It's not a time for us to think, by the way, the green card lottery. I tried it twice, Nika flop. It's not easy to get it. Why was if Kire you are going to apply in Aupate that easily? Amen. You are staying with me right here. We when I mean me hapa. Tuko tu hapa. Praise the name of the Lord. So we must agree to be peacemakers to enjoy our land, to enjoy our nation. Praise the name of the Lord. Ato kitoka Mombasa. Akukumbusha tu. Pwani bado ni Kenya. Hallelujah. <laughs> Pwani ni Kenya. <laughs> Nakuru ni Kenya. Wherever you go is still Kenya. Wana iso persifa. So please, let's lower our voices at this time. Because the louder we become, the louder the other people are also getting. The louder you, you, are, you are in your conflict at home, the louder the other person becomes. And there will be no peace when that happens. Now, it is believed scientifically, maybe Rosomole can uh, uh, be able to, to, to support this, that the brain, the brain has two parts. The gray part and the white part. The gray part is, um, is, is, is called the cortex. It's the one that makes you to, to think smart. Okay? To plan, to strategize. So when you're planning, when you're strategizing, when you're thinking smart, you're using the gray part. When you are planless, 
you are angry, you are vengeful, you're using the white part. Most of the time when we get angry, we lower our thinking. We get back to the white part. And the kind of decisions we make are dumb decisions. The kind of uh, words we use are terrible words. The kind of actions we make are bad actions. And therefore, anger lowers you down, makes you to be less smart, makes you to say things you don't like to say. It makes you to think, you know, uh, uh, less straight. You are not going to be reasoning properly. So, please take control of your, uh, uh, um, you know, take control of, of the volume of your thinking and of your speaking. Lower your voice so that you can be able to use your top part of the brain so that you can think smart so that you can speak things that build not things that tear down hallelujah when you get angry and uh, you drop down from uh, cortex to the other part of the brain your wisdom goes down in fact it is said the angrier you are the damber you are. That is why if you are kids, for those of us who have children, and they see their mother and their father have conflict, if they can secretly take a video, and then later on now, a few days you're okay, if they were to show you that video, you will wonder whether you are that man who was talking like that, who was behaving like that. You do things you are not proud of. And that is why there are times just because we don't like, you know, a certain results, then we just burn things. Sometimes the thing you burn is your own house. It's the shop of your uncle and you burn it down. You do dumb decisions. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen? And so, we pray that God will help us that when we are in conflict, we can lower our voices. When I saw Persifa. So that we can be able to build peace. Amen. It is also said scientifically that in your brain, there are some neurons called mirror neurons. Now, these mirror neurons... When you're angry, they, these are the things that make you do, they make you do what you see. So you see people saying, hakietu, hakietu. Inside of you also begin to develop hakietu. You see people are angry and abusing others. Something within you, you are mirrored, your brain mirrors what it sees. And you also begin to talk negatively about those people. This is the, 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 these are the neurons in the brain that make you cry when you are watching a movie. It is acted, but you are crying. Why? Because you are mirroring what you are seeing. Amen. Have you ever watched a movie and somebody is playing others and you feel like, why can't they just see? Why can't this person just be fixed? This one needs just to be slapped around to come back to their senses. If you are to get in there and do it. Because the, the mirror neurons are behaving as a result of what they see. May God help us. That we don't come to be a people that just react because other people are reacting. Angry because others are angry. Abusive because others are abusive. That we can be able to control ourselves our voices praise the name of the lord we must have people that are peacemakers in this land and the church must take the lead ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse number 17 the bible says in ecclesiastes 9 17 better to hear the quiet words of a wise person than the shouts of a foolish king Amen. 
Those of us who feel we have won, better to hear the quiet words, quiet of a wise person than the shouts of a person who is on top as the king, as the leader, as the winner. But your words are not building anybody. Amen. Number two thing. How to break through conflicts. Slow down the pace of your speaking. Slow down the pace of your speaking. Breathe and slow down the pace of your speaking. That is why sometimes it's helpful to just take a, breath, take, take a deep breath before you start talking in the conflict. Amen. Take a breath. If you feel disappointed or you feel excited about the results, take a breath. Don't just fire words. The angrier you get, the faster you talk. I don't know whether you realize that. The angrier you get, the faster you talk. I remember times that we have had, you know, um, conflicts in my house. We have three children. One of them, irrespective of how hard you will come on them, irrespective of what you will say, the voice has always been low. I won't tell you which one. But of the three, there is one. There are two that are always defensive. Defensive. You talk, they talk. You talk, they talk. They defend themselves. They, you know, but there's one. Even when that one is annoyed, the voice is always low. And I've learned a lot from that child. Because I am one of those people who have this problem. The angrier you are, the faster you talk. The other person is talking and says, listen, 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 listen. You don't want others to listen. You want them to listen to you. And I'm praying that God will help us as a people. The church taking the lead. We must lower the space of our talking. There are too many prophecies in this land that are bringing conflict. They are not helping us to be a peaceful nation because what do you expect if today Prince Chapel is prophesying so and so is, uh, is, is the chosen one is the one that is going God showed and they use the word God God aliniambia so and so then ICC God alituambia hivi then FEM God alituambia hivi are we being are we promoting peace are we not confusing people are we not causing conflict because this particular group will stand up by the fact that they are God. Their, their prophet said, God said it. The other group is also standing. The prophet told us, God said so and so. And so when things happen and it doesn't happen the way it was prophesied, how do you expect these congregations to still be at peace and accept that this is the will of God? So the church must help us to de-escalate conflict. By being true to God. Praise the name of the Lord. And speaking less. And giving less prophecies. We are speaking too much. The Pentecostal church. We are too much. Especially in the election year. We need to slow down. Praise the name of the Lord. Slow down. We need to talk less. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs. 29 11. Proverbs 29 11. <clears throat> it says, A self confident fool utters all his anger, but a wise man holds it back and steals it. Underline the word self confident. There are people that are too confident. To just escalate problems and conflicts. They tell you as it is. They remember, Mimi wanna sema vile leave you. Eh? 
But are you bringing peace? Are you promoting peace? So we need to slow down. Praise the name of the Lord. Even when you are provoked, before you react, breathe. That is why counselors will tell you when you are angry before you count to 10. If you are very angry, count to 100. <laughs> By the time you finish, you have cooled down a little bit. Amen. Um, Proverbs 15, 18 from the message version. The Bible says, hot tempers start fights. A calm, cool spirit keeps the peace. May God help us with calm, cool spirit. Especially this time, from both two sides of the divide, we need a calm, cool spirit so that we can have a peaceful nation. Amen. And the church must take the lead. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse number 4. The Bible says, If a ruler loses, loses his temper against you, don't panic. A calm disposition quiets in temperate rage. Sometimes we make the people in leadership position to lose their tempers. But when we, uh, we, 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 we respond to the loss of their temper with a quiet disposition, a calm disposition, they cool down faster. Praise the name of the Lord. So when we see our president angry, we need to have a quiet disposition as a nation. He will come down. But when we call him names, and we say he's doing that because he's drunk, and, and we send memes, you know, mimic him, whatever, you make him even more angrier. The next time he speaks, he's more angrier. But when we have a quiet disposition, we wonder what's going on? What's up with our leader? Then the leader calms down. What's going on with dad? But not when dad is annoyed, dad is angry, and mom and the children are mimicking and saying, Kuna watu kama mandazi leo. <laughs> and you expect the man to calm down? He will not. Praise the name of the Lord. Number three. Listen more than you talk. When you want to bring peace in a conflict, listen more. We've been told this over and over again that God gave us two ears and one mouth to listen more and speak less. But most of us behave like we have two mouths and one ear. We speak more than we listen. No wonder small things trigger very serious conflicts in our relationships, in our business partnerships, until we break and separate out of a small thing because we want to be the one to be heard. James chapter 1 and verse number 19. The Bible says, um, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to get angry. If only we can apply this in our relationships. We be too quick to listen and slow to get angry. Conflict will come. But we will still quickly resolve and be at peace. Things may happen in the nation. Elections will come and we will have a tight competition. And after the results are announced, we will be able to quickly come down and be able to accept and move on. But if we are too quick to get angry, we can't resolve anything. 
We cannot resolve anything. If only we could listen to others the way we want them to listen to us. You know, most of the time, you want them to get your point. You want them to listen. But if only we can desire that we listen to them also the way we desire them to listen. The way you want your wife to understand you, also understand her. The way you want that child to understand, also try to understand that child. Amen. Proverbs 13.10 the Bible says, arrogant, actually this, <laughs> this proverb is, um, is, is, is speaking a lot about many of us. The arrogant know it all, stir up discord, but wise men and women listen to each other's counsel. We have a lot of arrogant know it alls in this nation at this time. They know everything. They know the secret meetings that were done in Sagana. They know the minutes of the meeting. They know what was said. They know what was planned. They know everything. They know it all. Arrogance. They are the ones that are causing more discord because, you know, they are feeding us with, by the way, do you know how many Form 34As? We know it better than even the guys. Do you know who was taken hostage and who was forced? And, and do you know that so-and-so packed his bags? He was actually going to run. We know all these things. Where are we getting them from? There are some who saw uh, the chairman crossing the border. They saw him. Then they brought him back. We are causing discord instead of building peace. Number four, notice the heart behind the words. There are times somebody is speaking, but you need to read more into the heart. There's something making this person to talk the way they are talking, to cry to respond the way they are responding. You, you are just getting the words, but there's something behind. I don't know what happens to the sixth sense of ladies. You say that ladies have a sixth sense, but they, they use this sixth sense selectively. When it is needed the most, it is needed the most. You need to understand the words behind, I mean, the, the heart behind what your husband is saying. Sixth sense has been switched off completely. Switched off, immobilized. <laughs> but that is the time we need it on so that I know, why is my husband shouting? Why is he annoyed? Why is he mad and I've not even said anything? What is this? There's something behind. I want to know that. You will create peace faster. Praise the name of the Lord. The sixth sense should not only be used when there was a smile when somebody passed. Then you say, my sixth sense is telling me something. Stop listening to the words only and start listening to the emotions behind the words. Praise the name of the Lord. Proverbs 14.10, the Bible says, Each heart knows its own bitterness, and no one else can fully share its joy. There's something when we speak that only the heart understands. Do you know that your heart has ears? Your heart has emotions. Your heart has understanding that your eyes and your ears don't have. And so there are times you need to hear with your heart, not with your ears. There are times you need to understand with your heart. That way you will help to bring peace in your home and in your nation. Praise the name of the Lord. Number five. You need to pray for calm when you are listening. When you are listening, accompany your listening with prayer for calmness, that God will calm you. Because when you are calm, 
When you are listening and you are calm, you get more. But when you are listening and you are raging inside, you know those people, they are listening, but they are... Onge, talk. I'm hearing. You are not hearing anything. Hakuna kitu na skiza. Si useme sasa. Sema. Onge, 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 onge. I'm listening. Talk, 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 talk. You are not listening to anything. Calm down. Pray for calm so that they can talk. Even when you want to speak, you calm down. You tell your speak to yourself and say, Hey, Bishop, calm down. Judges chapter 6 and verse number 24. There is an altar that Joshua built after a war that I want each and every one of us to build in our own lives and in our homes. It's called the altar of peace, the altar of shalom. The Bible says, and Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and named it Yahweh Shalom. He named the altar Yahweh Shalom, which means the Lord is peace. The altar remains in Ophrah in the land of the clan of Beazah to this day. May there be an altar in your life called an altar of peace. That altar of peace should speak louder than the altar of disappointment in your life. It should speak louder than the altar of anger in your life. It should speak louder than every other altar. Put more fire on this altar of peace. Praise the name of the Lord. More than you put any other, I mean you put fire on any other altar. So raise up, build up this altar in your own life. It is going to help you. Build this altar in your own life. It will help the nation of Kenya. Psalm 65 and verse number 7. The Bible says, You quieted the raging oceans with their pounding waves and silenced the shouting of the nations. God is able to silence the shouting of the tribes in this nation. When that tribe is too loud and the other tribe is too loud, we are not helping to resolve any conflict. We must pray and say, Lord, silence the raging of that nation. Silence them. Praise the name of the Lord. So that we can experience peace in our land. We have only one nation. We must work at it and build it. Number six, six, seek to understand before seeking to be understood. Many times we want to be understood not to understand. What does the prayer of St. Assisi say? Help me to understand and not to be, not to be understood but to understand. I wish I had it, I would have read it to you. But that is the way we are supposed to help build peace. We must seek to understand. More than we are seeking to be understood. Right now, we want to be understood. Amen. And you know, unfortunately, some of us have even, you've decided we are no longer who we are. We have been branded, okay? Sasa, you know the way we are calling each other now? Hey, Azimio. <laughs> hey, Kenya Kwanza. Your identity has been, has been replaced. <laughs> we have replaced our identities. So, even as we describe ourselves, Sisi wa wana Azimio. Sisi, you know, Sisi wa Kenya Kwanza. We have replaced our identity. And um, <laughs> we want people to understand us that way. We want them to understand us understand where we are coming from understand our argument understand what we are saying understand how we are feeling and and we don't want to understand how you feel and where you are coming from and what you're saying we want you to understand us and that is the problem that causes more conflict and more misunderstanding may god help us proverbs chapter 18 and verse number 13 Most people want to see things the way they want to see them. Answering before listening is both stupid and rude. 
So next time you answer somebody before you have listened, please tell yourself, now you're being stupid and rude. They don't have to tell you. You tell yourself. Bishop, now you're being stupid and rude. <laughs> because you have not even listened to what they are saying. You have not even allowed them to construct a full sentence. And you're already answering back. Hallelujah. God forbid that I be stupid and rude. Amen. Number seven, try to see the other person's perspective. If you're going to resolve a conflict, you need to see the other person's perspective. Yes, you want them to understand you. There's a perspective they are coming from. There's, there's something, you know, behind what they're saying. Understand it. Get to see it. You know, everything is about perception. That is why we create perception and then it captures the people. Everything is about perception. So we create a perception about this person, about women, about men, and about this tribe, and about that tribe, and then it sticks. Unfortunately, most of the times, it is usually wrong perspective. But may God help us to begin to understand where somebody is coming from, why they are saying what they are saying, why they are feeling the way they are feeling. Amen. Philippians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. Somebody said that by nature we are selfish people. But when we learn to want to understand the other people before they understand us, we want to know their perspective, then we are dealing with our selfishness. The Bible says in Philippians um, uh, 2, verse number 4 and 5, each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. Look for the interest of the other person. When we have conflict in our homes, we usually look at our interest. We usually look at us. We want to win the argument. Verse 5, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Number eight, I'm just about to finish. Ask God to give you a clear picture of yourself. When you're in a conflict, somebody tells you, <clears throat> just like the scripture has defined us, now you're being rude and stupid. But you don't want to, you don't see yourself that way. You are seeing yourself as the most intelligent person. But there is one that will always give us the right perspective of who we are. And that is God. Because God sees what is here. I can paint a different picture for you on the outside, but he sees my heart. So you also need to pray that God will help you to now understand who you are. That way you will be able to calm yourself down. You will be able to correct certain things that you need to correct. And the conflict will be resolved and peace will be established in our lives. Psalm 139 verse number 23 and 24. Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24. The Bible says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. You ask the Lord to search you so that you can be able to know your anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. You are asking the Lord to point it out because if the Lord points it out, you cannot argue with the Lord. If your spouse points it out, you will say they don't like you. That is why they are pointing it out. But if God is the one to point it out, you can argue with God. Amen. So pray that kind of prayer. Lord, search me. Show me how, you know, the areas that I'm being unreasonable. Show me when I'm being too difficult. Show me. And God can begin to speak to you. And then you can begin to correct things and create the peace that is needed. Praise the name of the Lord. We need peacemakers. We have too many trouble 
brewers. We need peacemakers. Amen. Number nine. You need to admit any part of the conflict that you have caused. I've just given you a full course that you will pay Rosemary Omore 5000 to teach you. Amen. <laughs> admit any part of the conflict that you have caused. Some, sent, some sentiments are too nice to quote, but they're too hard to accept and apply. Quote, text two to tango. Sounds very nice, right? <laughs> text two, two to tango. It takes two to tango. It sounds a nice quote, but what it means, there is no conflict if you never play it apart. It takes two to argue. It takes two to quarrel. It takes two to fight. Amen. If you're fighting yourself, you're doing what we call shadow boxing. And when we see you shadow boxing, we'll be thinking something is. But it takes two to fight. Two to quarrel, two to have a conflict. So there's a part, however small it is, there's just like a part. Maybe it is the way you reacted. Maybe it's the way you smiled. Maybe it's the way you laughed. Maybe it's the way you sighed. <clears throat> that alone can cause a conflict. Amen. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 3 and 5. Remember what Jesus said? Sometimes we are too quick to see the problem with the other person. They are the causes. They are the brewers of trouble. They are the ones that are causing this nation to burn. But the Bible is saying, before you point a finger, why do you stare from without at the very small particle that is in your brother's eye but do not become aware of and consider the beam of timber <laughs> that is in your own eye eh? there's a beam of timber like anyone on a took a particle pale that is in the other person's eye number four matthew 7 3 to 5 let's read 4 and 5 or how can you say to your brother, let me get the tiny particle out of your eye when there is the beam of timber in your own eye? You hypocrite, first get the beam of timber out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take the tiny particle out of your brother's eye. One of the reasons why we find it so hard to resolve conflict is because we ourselves our eyes are, you know, there is a timber there. We are not even seeing properly. You know, we are, we, are, we, are, we are not seeing properly, but we are accusing, you know, uh, the other person of having something tiny in their eyes. We need to remove this thing that is making us blink, that is making us not see clearly. Then we can help them to remove the other thing that is in their eye. Amen. Amen. Are you a peacemaker? Number 10. Let me say this one when you are standing. So let's stand so that you know that I'm finishing. Let's arise. Choose your words carefully. In a conflict, choose your words carefully. Don't just speak anyhow. Lee. When you're having a conflict, choose your words carefully. When we're having this issue of unresolved uh, 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 um, winner of the election... We need to choose our words carefully. Hallelujah. Wana azimio. Choose your words carefully. Watu wa Kenya kwanza. Choose your words carefully. Don't just speak anyhow. Li. You will burn our nation. Choose your words carefully. If you want that family to stick together. If you want your relationship with your siblings to continue to be okay. Choose your words carefully when you're in a conflict. But the problem is when we're in conflict, that's the time we speak anyhow. That is the time to naongeaga matope. Amen. 
Words have power. Tumeambiwa tu hapa. We think words have power only when it is good things. So it has power to build you whatever, whatever. Words have power to burn also. They have power to destroy. It can set a forest on fire. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse number 18. The Bible says, Reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Do you know how many people's hearts have been pierced by your reckless words, by your reckless tweets, by your reckless uh, Facebook message that you put, by your reckless, you know, uh, 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 um, what is the other one that we... Uh, the thing you posted there, TikTok, the reckless post you put there has pierced somebody's heart and is escalating the conflict instead of creating peace. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 29 from the Amplified Version. Your tongue should be a healing source not a source of trouble. It says, do not let any and all some talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. Ask yourself, what do the people in Azimio need at this time? Then speak those things. What does the Kenya Kwanzaa people need at this time? Speak those things. You know, speak things that are going to help, not things that will... You know, are just not helping. Let no foul or polluting language, no evil word, nor an awesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth, but only such speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others, as is fitting to the need and the occasion, that it may be a blessing and give grace, God's favor, to those who hear it. Amen. I was, I was a bit disappointed. Somebody wrote up a Facebook message. And it was hurtful to somebody. And the person responded, corrected, nicely. But the response that came after was, Sorry, this, is, this happens to be my page. It's like, you know what? I will write whatever I want. <laughs> Sorry, this happens to be my page. As a believer, you can't have those kind of stands. Praise the name of the Lord. You can't tell us, Sorry, this is my page. No. I need you to heal me. I need you to encourage me. I need you to build me up, not pull me down. Praise the name of the Lord. A better Kenya, or a better home, or a better neighborhood will be founded on what peacemakers do.